Story three of A Changed Man and Other Tales by Thomas Hardy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Story three Alicia's Diary, Chapters One through Three. Chapter One She Misses Her Sister. July seven. I wander about the house in a mood of unutterable sadness, for my dear sister Caroline has left home to-day with my mother, and I shall not see them again for several weeks. They have accepted a long-standing invitation to visit some old friends of ours, the Marlets, who live at Versailles for cheapness, my mother thinking that it will be for the good of Caroline to see a little of France and Paris. But I don't quite like her going. I fear she may lose some of that childlike simplicity and gentleness which so characterize her, and have been nourished by the seclusion of our life here. Her solicitude about her pony before starting was quite touching, and she made me promise to visit it daily, and see that it came to no harm. Caroline gone abroad, and I left here. It is the reverse of an ordinary situation, for good or ill luck has mostly ordained that I should be the absent one. Mother will be quite tired out by the young enthusiasm of Caroline. She will demand to be taken everywhere, to Paris continually, of course, to all the stock shrines of history's devotees, to palaces and prisons, to king's tombs and queen's tombs, to cemeteries and picture galleries and royal hunting forests. My poor mother, having gone over most of this ground many times before, will perhaps not find the perambulation so exhilarating as will Caroline herself i wish i could have gone with them i would not have minded having my legs walked off to please caroline but this regret is absurd i could not of course leave my father with not a soul in the house to attend to the calls of the parishioners or to pour out his tea july fifteen a letter from caroline to-day it is very strange that she tells me nothing which i expected her to tell only trivial details she seems dazzled by the brilliancy of Paris, which no doubt appears still more brilliant to her from the fact of her only being able to obtain occasional glimpses of it. She would see that Paris, too, has a seamy side if you live there. I was not aware that the Marlets knew so many people. If, as mother has said, they went to reside at Versailles for reasons of economy, they will not effect much in that direction while they make a practice of entertaining all the acquaintances who happen to be in their neighbourhood. They do not confine their hospitalities to English people either. I wonder who this Monsieur de la Feste is, in whom Caroline says my mother is so much interested. July 18. Another letter from Caroline. I have learnt from this epistle that M. Charles de la Feste is only one of the many friends of the Marlets, that though a Frenchman by birth, and now again temporarily at Versailles, he has lived in England many, many years, that he is a talented landscape and marine painter, and has exhibited at the Salon, and, I think, in London his style and subjects are considered somewhat peculiar in paris rather english than continental i have not as yet learnt his age or his condition married or single from the tone and nature of her remarks about him he sometimes seems to be a middle-aged family man sometimes <laughs> quite the reverse from his nomadic habits i should say the latter is the most likely he has travelled and seen a great deal she tells me and knows more about english literature than she knows herself july twenty one letter from caroline query is a friend of ours and the marlets of whom she now anonymously and mysteriously speaks the same personage as the monsieur de la feste of her former letters he must be the same i think from his pursuits if so whence this sudden change of tone i have been lost in thought for at least a quarter of an hour since writing the preceding sentence suppose my dear sister is falling in love with this young man there is no longer any doubt about his age what a very awkward risky thing for her i do hope that my mother has an eye on these proceedings but then poor mother never sees the drift of anything she is in truth less of a mother to caroline than i am if i were there how jealously i would watch him and ascertain his designs i am of a stronger nature than caroline 
how i have supported her in the past through her little troubles and great griefs is she agitated at the presence of this to her new and strange feeling but i am assuming her to be desperately in love when i have no proof of anything of the kind he may be merely a casual friend of whom i shall hear no more july twenty four then he is a bachelor as i suspected if monsieur de la feste ever marries he will etc so she writes they are getting into close quarters obviously also uh, something to keep my hair smooth which monsieur de la feste told me he had found useful for the tips of his moustache very naively related this and with how much unconsciousness of the intimacy between them that the remark reveals but my mother what can she be doing does she know of this and if so why does she not allude to it in her letters to my father i have been to look at caroline's pony in obedience to her reiterated request that i would not miss a day in seeing that she was well cared for anxious as caroline was about this pony of hers before starting she now never mentioned the poor animal once in her letters the image of her pet suffers from displacement august three caroline's forgetfulness of her pony has naturally enough extended to me her sister it is ten days since she last wrote and but for a note from my mother i would not know if she were dead or alive chapter two news interesting and serious august five a cloud of letters a letter from caroline another from mother also one from each to my father the probability to which all the intelligence from my sister has pointed of late turns out to be a fact there is an engagement or almost an engagement announced between my dear caroline and monsieur de la feste to caroline's sublime happiness and my mother's entire satisfaction as well as to that of the marlets they and my mother seem to know all about the young man which is more than i do though a little extended information about him considering that i am caroline's older sister would not have been amiss i half feel with my father who is much surprised and i am sure not altogether satisfied that he should not have been consulted at all before matters reached such a definite stage though he is too amiable to say so openly i don't quite say that a good thing should have been hindered for the sake of our opinion if it is a good thing but the announcement comes very suddenly it must have been foreseen by my mother for some time that this upshot was probable and caroline might have told me more distinctly that m de la feste was her lover instead of alluding so mysteriously to him as only a friend of the marlets and lately dropping his name altogether my father without exactly objecting to him as a frenchman wishes he were of english or some other reasonable nationality for one son-in-law but i tell him that the demarcations of races kingdoms and creeds are wearing down every day that patriotism is a sort of vice and that the character of the individual is all we need think about in this case i wonder if in the event of their marriage he will continue to live at versailles or if he will come to england august seven a supplemental letter from caroline answering by anticipation some of the aforesaid queries she tells me that charles though he makes versailles his present home is by no means bound by his profession to continue there that he will live just where she wishes provided it be not too far from some centre of thought art and civilization my mother and herself both think that the marriage should not take place till next year he exhibits landscapes and canal scenery every year she says so i suppose he is popular and that his income is sufficient to keep them in comfort if not i do not see why my father could not settle something more on them than he had intended and diminish by a little what he had proposed for me whilst it was imagined that i should be the first to stand in need of such of engaging manner attractive appearance and virtuous character is the reply i receive from her in answer to my request for a personal description 
that is vague enough and i would rather have had one definite fact of complexion voice deed or opinion but of course she has no eye now for material qualities she cannot see him as he is she sees him irradiated with glory such as never appertained and never will appertain to any man foreign english or colonial to think that caroline two years my junior and so childlike as to be five years my junior in nature should be engaged to be married before me but that is what happens in families more often than we are apt to remember august sixteen interesting news to-day charles she says has pleaded that their marriage may just as well be this year as next and he seems to have nearly converted my mother to the same way of thinking i do not myself see any reason for delay beyond the standing one of my father having as yet had no opportunity of forming an opinion upon the man the time or anything however he takes his lot very quietly and they are coming home to talk the question over with us caroline having decided not to make any positive arrangements for this change of state till she has seen me subject to my own and my father's approval she says they are inclined to settle the date of the wedding for november three months from the present time that it shall take place here in the village that i of course shall be bridesmaid and many other particulars she draws an artless picture of the probable effect upon the minds of the villagers of this romantic performance in the chancel of our old church in which she is to be chief actor the foreign gentleman dropping down like a god from the skies picking her up and triumphantly carrying her off her only grief will be separation from me but this is to be assuaged by my going and staying with her for long months at a time this simple prattle is very sweet to me my dear sister but i cannot help feeling sad at the occasion of it in the nature of things it is obvious that i shall never be to you again what i hitherto have been your guide counsellor and most familiar friend monsieur de la festa does certainly seem to be all that one could desire as protector to a sensitive fragile child like caroline and for that i am thankful still i must remember that i see him as yet only through her eyes for her sake i am intensely anxious to meet him and scrutinize him through and through and learn what the man is really made of who is to have such a treasure in his keeping the engagement has certainly been formed a little precipitately i quite agree with my father in that still good and happy marriages have been made in a hurry before now and mother seems well satisfied august twenty a terrible announcement came this morning and we are in deep trouble i have been quite unable to steady my thoughts on anything to-day till now half-past eleven at night and i only attempt writing these notes because i am too restless to remain idle and there is nothing but waiting and waiting left for me to do mother has been taken dangerously ill at versailles they are within a day or two of starting but all thought of leaving must now be postponed for she cannot possibly be moved in her present state i don't like the sound of hemorrhage at all in a woman of her full habit and caroline and the marlets have not exaggerated their accounts i am certain on the receipt of the letter my father instantly decided to go to her and i have been occupied all day in getting him off for as he calculates on being absent several days there have been many matters for him to arrange before setting out the chief being to find some one who will do duty for him next sunday a quest of no small difficulty at such short notice but at last poor old feeble mr dugdale has agreed to attempt it with mr hyam the scripture reader to assist him in the lessons i fain would have gone with my father to escape the irksome anxiety of awaiting her but somebody had to stay and i could best be spared george has driven him to the station to meet the last train by which he will catch the midnight boat and reach havre some time in the morning he hates the sea and a night passage in particular i hope he will get there without mishap of any kind but i feel anxious for him stay at home as he is and unable to cope with any difficulty such an errand too the journey will be sad enough at best i almost think i ought to have been the one to go to her august twenty one 
i nearly fell asleep of heaviness of spirit last night over my writing my father must have reached paris by this time and now here comes a letter later the letter was to express an earnest hope that my father had set out my poor mother is sinking they fear what will become of caroline oh how i wish i could see my mother why could not both have gone later i get up from my chair and walk from window to window and then come and write a line i cannot even divine how poor caroline's marriage is to be carried out if mother dies i pray that father may have got there in time to talk to her and receive some directions from her about caroline and monsieur de la festa a man whom neither my father nor i have seen i who might be useful in this emergency am doomed to stay here waiting in suspense august twenty three a letter from my father containing the sad news that my mother's spirit has flown poor little caroline is heartbroken she was always more my mother's pet than i was it is some comfort to know that my father arrived in time to hear from her own lips her strongly expressed wish that caroline's marriage should be solemnized as soon as possible monsieur de la festa seems to have been a great favourite of my dear mother's and i suppose it now becomes almost a sacred duty of my father to accept him as a son-in-law without criticism chapter three her gloom lightens a little september ten i have inserted nothing in my diary for more than a fortnight events have been altogether too sad for me to have the spirit to put them on paper and yet there comes a time when the act of recording one's trouble is recognized as a welcome method of dwelling upon it my dear mother has been brought home and buried here in the parish it is not so much her own wish that this should be done as my father's who particularly desired that she should lie in the family vault beside his first wife i saw them side by side before the vault was closed two women beloved by one man as i stood and caroline by my side i fell into a sort of dream and had an odd fancy that caroline and i might be also beloved of one and lie like these together an impossibility of course being sisters when i awoke from my reverie caroline took my hand and said it was time to leave september fourteen the wedding is indefinitely postponed caroline is like a girl awakening in the middle of a somnambulistic experience and does not realize where she is or how she stands she walks about silently and i cannot tell her thoughts as i used to do it was her own doing to write to m de la festa and tell him that the wedding could not possibly take place this autumn as originally planned there is something depressing in this long postponement if she is to marry him at all and yet i do not see how it could be avoided october twenty i have had so much to occupy me in consoling caroline that i have been continually overlooking my diary her life was much nearer to my mother's than mine was she has never as i lived away from home long enough to become self-dependent and hence in her first loss and all that it involved she drooped like a rain-beaten lily but she is of a nature whose wounds soon heal even though they may be deep and the supreme poignancy of her sorrow has already passed my father is of opinion that the wedding should not be delayed too long while at versailles he made the acquaintance of m de la festa and though they had but a short and hurried communion with each other he was much impressed by m de la festa's disposition and conduct and is strongly in favour of his suit it is odd that caroline's betrothed should influence in his favour all who come near him his portrait which dear caroline has shown me exhibits him to be of a physique that partly accounts for this but there must be something more than mere appearance and it is probably some sort of glamour or fascinating power the quality which prevented caroline from describing him to me with any accuracy of detail at the same time i see from the photograph that his face and head are remarkably well formed and though the contours of his mouth are hidden by his moustache his arched brows show well the romantic disposition of a true lover and painter of nature 
i think that the owner of such a face as this must be tender and sympathetic and true october thirty as my sister's grief for her mother becomes more and more calmed her love for m de la festa begins to reassume its former absorbing command of her she thinks of him incessantly and writes whole treatises to him by way of letters her blank disappointment at his announcement of his inability to pay us a visit quite so soon as he had promised was quite tragic i too am disappointed for i wanted to see and estimate him but having arranged to go to holland to see some aerial effects for his pictures which are only to be obtained at this time of the autumn he is obliged to postpone his journey this way which is now to be made early in the new year i think myself that he ought to have come at all sacrifices considering caroline's recent loss the sad postponement of what she was looking forward to and her single-minded affection for him still who knows his professional success is important moreover she is cheerful and hopeful and the delay will soon be overpassed end of story three chapters one through three